and welcome to the session on a historical overview of medieval philosophy. An introduction to medieval philosophy. The history of western philosophy is rather a vast one. It covers several centuries and involves the works of numerous philosophers and thinkers. All these philosophers and their philosophical thoughts contributed tremendously to the development and enrichment of western philosophy. The history of western philosophy can be divided into four broad compartments, the ancient philosophy, the medieval philosophy, the modern philosophy and the contemporary philosophy. In the next few units, we will look at the medieval period in some detail and will attempt to understand the influence it had on the entire history of western philosophy. The medieval western philosophy is a broad topic because it spans across a period of about 1000 years. The conventional view among historians was that this period faced a major intellectual setback in western Europe. They argued that it was a period of intellectual stagnation compared to the classical period which preceded it and the modern period that followed it. However, this conventional view was negated by the historians of the 20th century who claimed that medieval period was indeed one that preserved many intellectual traditions. It gave rise to many great philosophical as well as theological thinkers starting from St. Augustine to William of Ockham. The medieval period also witnessed the emergence and dissemination of several ideas and schools of thought such as scholasticism, neoplatonism and nominalism. Even though there were several philosophers who were influenced by a number of philosophical traditions, some central concerns and themes remained constant throughout the medieval period. We can see those themes and concerns recurring in almost every important work of medieval philosophy. Some of such recurrent themes in western medieval philosophy include the conflict between faith and reason, the debate on predetermination versus free will, arguments to prove the existence of God and continuing discussions on the nature of man, God and the problem of evil. Why medieval philosophy is important? In the next few units on medieval philosophy, we will cover all these aspects one by one. It is important that we understand the philosophical ideas and concerns of the medieval period. There are two reasons for it. Firstly, medieval period is an important episode in the history of philosophy. Many major intellectual traditions were originated, nourished, negated and expanded during this period. Secondly, the central ideas and schools of thoughts originated in the modern and contemporary period borrowed heavily from the intellectual developments of the medieval period. So, if you have to understand the history of philosophy in a comprehensive way, you should pay special attention to the medieval period. In this unit and in the following units, we will attempt to get an exhaustive overview of medieval philosophy by addressing a number of questions such as what is medieval philosophy? What are the origins of medieval philosophy? How did medieval philosophy influence later philosophers and thinkers of the western world? What are the major features and characteristics of medieval philosophy? Who were the major philosophers and thinkers of this period? What were the central themes and concerns that were discussed during the medieval period? What are the major chronological divisions of medieval period? A quick recap. The period that preceded medieval western philosophy was the ancient classical period. You have already studied the origins, developments, the major philosophers and the central philosophical thoughts of the ancient period in detail. Ancient philosophy began roughly in BC 6th century and it can be classified broadly into three categories. Pre-Socratic philosophy, classical Greek philosophy and Hellenistic philosophy. Out of these philosophy of the classical Greek was the most important and influential one. It included the works of great Greek masters such as Socrates, Plato and Aristotle. This intellectually vibrant period was closely followed by the Hellenistic period, the period when ancient Greece was incorporated to the Roman Empire. A wide variety of subjects including metaphysics, ontology, political philosophy, ethics, biology, rhetoric, logic and aesthetics were discussed during these two periods. A number of philosophical schools emerged during the Greco-Roman world of the Hellenistic period. 
Some of the most important ones were Neoplatonism, Skepticism, Cynicism, Stoicism and Epicureanism. Out of these schools of thought, Neoplatonism deserves special mention because most of the medieval philosophers and theologians were hugely influenced by Neoplatonic ideas. What is medieval philosophy? Now we come to our main topic that is medieval philosophy. What is medieval philosophy is the first question to be addressed. If you look at history, you can see that the entire western philosophy is dominated by Greek thinkers starting from pre-Socratic period to the Hellenistic times. But in the 4th century, something momentous happened which changed the course of history forever. By the 4th century, the Roman Empire collapsed and Christianity swept through the Roman Empire. As a result, every cultural and political institution of the period underwent massive changes. That happened with philosophy as well. The nature of philosophy was radically transformed together with the topic of intellectual discussions. These changes inaugurated a new phase of philosophy which lasted for about 1000 years starting from the fall of Roman Empire. This new phase of philosophy is called medieval philosophy or philosophy of the middle ages. The four sub traditions of medieval philosophy. Medieval philosophy is the name given to a broad and distinct tradition within western philosophy. It has four sub traditions namely the Arab philosophy, the Jewish philosophy, the Latin philosophy and the Byzantine philosophy. John Marenborn introdu introduction of the Rutledge history of philosophy makes the following observation. Arab philosophy took place in the Islamic lands. The works written within this tradition was usually written in Arabic but at times in Persian too. This tradition began in the 9th century and ended with death of Ibn Rushd also known as Averroes. The philosophy written by Jews in both Islamic and Christian countries is called Jewish philosophy. It is written in Arabic and Hebrew and flourished in the Jewish colonies of the Christian Europe. It is to be noted that the Jewish and Arab traditions are closely interconnected. The philosophy produced in the countries of the Christian Europe is called Latin philosophy. The main language for higher learning in those countries was mostly Latin. Hence, Latin philosophy was mostly written in Latin language. Latin philosophy drew from the Jewish and Arab traditions. Byzantine philosophy is a tradition of less importance. It is the philosophy originated from the Christian empire of Byzantium. The philosophical works of this tradition were written in Greek language. Even though medieval philosophy flourished as four different traditions in four different languages and culture, Scholars speak of it as a single distinct tradition. According to John Marenborn, the reason for this is simple. These four traditions are closely interlinked. Although the differences of these traditions are important, medieval philosophy can be best understood when they are taken as a whole. Moreover, all these four philosophical traditions use the common heritage of classical Greek philosophy. The medieval period or the middle ages. As the name suggests, medieval philosophy is the philosophical thoughts developed during the period in Europe history called the medieval period. The medieval period is also known as the middle ages and it is marked at the end of the classical period. Modern historians consider this period as starting from the fall of the western Roman empire and lasting till the ages of renaissance. In other words, it started roughly from 4th century AD and continued till 15th century AD. According to some scholars, medieval philosophy took roots during the 8th century as an independent philosophical inquiry. This period witnessed the slow passage from the fall of western Roman Empire to the rebuilding of a new Christian civilization in Europe. The medieval period only marked the decline of the classical pagan culture but was marked by spread of Christian theology. The revival of Christian civilization and the high period of scholasticism were the important characteristics of the medieval times. These historical events and changes shaped the course and development of the philosophical thoughts during this period. The spirit of medieval philosophy. There are two major processes that define the entire spirit of medieval philosophy. Those processes are 1. Theological problems were addressed in such a way that 
sacred doctrines were integrated into secular learning. 2. The ancient culture developed in Greece and Rome during the classical period was rediscovered by the 12th and 13th centuries. You will study in later modules that many of the great philosophers and thinkers of the Middle Ages were theologians. They tried to integrate Christian teachings and doctrines into the secular ways we understand the world. In other words, theology became central to the discussions around issues of human life and nature. Attempts were made to combine faith with reason. To put it simply, the medieval thinkers tried to understand and explain issues related to faith and theological doctrines through reason and philosophy. You have studied that the works produced in the classical Greek period were crucial to the development of Western philosophy. But the medieval period had a specialty. The works of the great Greek masters Plato and Aristotle were not available to the medieval thinkers. They had access only to commentaries written on those important works by Neoplatonist thinkers. As a result, there was a major gap between the ancient classical philosophy and medieval philosophy. This gap was bridged in the 12th and 13th centuries when the works of Aristotle and Plato were made available in their original forms. Fall of Roman Empire and the spread of Christianity The general character of medieval philosophy in the western world was determined to a significant extent by the historical events associated with the collapse of Roman civilization. The two major factors that influence the development of medieval philosophical thoughts are 1. The decline of Roman Empire. 2. The emergence of church as a center of learning. Let us look at these two historical events in some detail so that we can understand the origins of medieval philosophy in better way. 1. The decline of Roman Empire. It is already stated that the medieval philosophy began with the fall of Roman Empire. Now the question we should address is that why and how did the fall of Roman Empire or civilization give rise to a distinct tradition of philosophy? To answer this question, we should first understand the unique features of Roman civilization. The Roman Empire was an extremely advanced civilization which was established in the 3rd century BC. It contained complex systems of laws, infrastructure, highly developed educational institutions and a unique culture. It stretched across Europe and provided a basis for the social cohesion of Europe. As a result, the collapse of this empire gave rise to several centuries of chaos, which in history is known as the Dark Ages. The institutions and culture that had sustained philosophical and intellectual activity in the classical period were disintegrated during this period of chaos. Thus, medieval philosophy was developed in an environment devoid of the social and educational structures of the classical period. The influence of Greek language and the rich resources of the classical thought were also missing at that time. However, the ancient philosophical thoughts were gradually reclaimed during the course of the Middle Ages. This reclamation hugely impacted the development of the medieval philosophical tradition. The spread of Christianity the history of medieval philosophy cannot be written without mentioning the role of Christianity. The most noteworthy influence on medieval philosophy throughout its thousand year long history was the emergence and strengthening of Christian institutions. The importance of Christianity had grown during the late Roman Empire, that is, even before the decline of Roman civilization. With the fall of Roman Empire, the social structures of the empire collapsed and Western Europe lapsed into its dark ages. As a result, the role of the church became even more important because it was the only institution capable of supporting the intellectual culture. The church emerged as a crucial institution for formal education. Formal education was sustained in schools associated with monasteries, churches and cathedrals. Moreover, the libraries and scriptoriums of the church preserved ancient texts. Thus, church and other Christian institutions emerged as the focal points of education during the medieval period. The presence of church as an educational institution had major impacts on the medieval philosophy. Many medieval philosophers received their formal education in institutions related to church and monasteries. It should be noted that some of those philosophers were officially part of the church as monks, friars, priests 
or clerks. St. Augustine of Hippo, St. Thomas Aquinas and St. Anselm of Canterbury were some of the notable theologian cum philosophers of medieval period. In the later part of the Middle Ages, only men who had a degree in arts could study theology. A degree in theology was considered as the highest academic achievement in that period. Consequently, the study of philosophy went hand in hand with the study of theology. Most philosophers of the medieval period considered themselves as experts in theology. Thus, we can say that Christianity provided an institutional foundation to medieval philosophy. In addition to that, it acted as stimulation to philosophical thoughts and activities. The doctrines and ideas of Christianity became the subject matter of philosophical discussions and writings of the medieval period. Thus, medieval philosophy took shape in an intellectual world which was sustained by the church and Christian institutions. The Catholic Church was the major center for philosophical activity until the period of Renaissance and Enlightenment. That explains why much of the philosophical writings in the medieval times were religious in nature. Those writings were closely linked to religion, faith and the relationship of man to God. Another historical event also contributed to the theological nature of philosophy. Christianity constantly came under attack by other pagan cultures, so the theologians of the time found it necessary to turn to philosophy to protect Christian faith and defend it from those various attacks. Thus, the theologians of the medieval times started rationalizing Christian doctrines in an attempt to justify divine revelation. In other words, reason became an important tool to support matters related to faith. Philosophers who defended the church in this period were known as apologetics. During the Middle Ages, philosophy became instrumental in explaining and defending theological doctrines and dogmas. For example, when the city of Rome fell under the attack of the Germanic tribes, the pagan believers in the city started blaming the newly converted Christians. The pagans claimed that the city's fall was due to the disrespect Christians showed towards Roman gods by following the Christian God. This made St. Augustine of Hippo, a Christian theologian of the 4th and 5th centuries, write a book defending Christianity. We will learn more about it later when we deal with the works and writings of St. Augustine. The Transition from Classical Philosophy to Medieval Philosophy As we have already seen, the classical Western philosophy was predominantly Greek philosophy. It was during the Middle Ages that a transition happened from classical philosophy to medieval philosophy. However, this transition was not a smooth one, nor does it happen overnight. There are several factors that made the transition from classical to medieval philosophy a particularly complex one. Firstly, it was not just a shift from one tradition of philosophy to another. It was also a shift from one civilization to another that is, from Greek civilization to Christian civilization. It was not possible for Christianity to remove all the traces and influences of Greek culture. The love-hate relationship Christian culture had with Greek culture can be seen in the initial stages of medieval period. The Christian civilization was influenced by the Greek philosophical thoughts to a considerable extent. Secondly, a new set of philosophers and thinkers emerged during the Middle Ages. They were highly influenced by the works and philosophy of the classical period, classical Greek tradition. The views and works of the Greek master Aristotle and the Neoplatonist philosopher Plotinus had particularly influenced these new thinkers. Plato was a towering figure even during the medieval times, but his works were not available because copies of his works were vanished during this time. Since the original works of Plato was unavailable, thinkers of the Middle Ages relied heavily on Plotinus' summary of Plato's works. Thus, the works and thoughts of the classical Greek philosophers continued to influence the medieval philosophers. Thirdly, the cultural and intellectual tradition introduced by Christianity did not go well with the Greek intellectual tradition. There were many differences between these two traditions of thought. The foundation of the Christian tradition was Bible, which professed the existence of a monotheistic God, life after death, and the idea of expanding the kingdom of God. During the Middle Ages, the Christian emperors came into power, 
and they carried out measures control the cultural institutions that differed from Christian belief. Pagan temples were destroyed and schools of philosophy that were functioning from the days of Plato and Aristotle were closed down. This tension arising out of the inherent incompatibility of these two traditions can be seen throughout the history of medieval philosophy. However, as the Middle Ages progressed, several attempts have been made to blend the Greek and Christian views. We can learn about such attempts in later in the following units. Let me summarize what we have discussed so far. The philosophical and theological works produced during the Middle Ages is usually referred to as medieval philosophy. This was preceded by the ancient classical philosophy of the Greek and Hellenistic times and was followed by modern philosophy. It was influenced by many intellectual traditions of the classical and Hellenistic period. However, the works of major Greek philosophers such as Aristotle and Plato were not available to the early medieval thinkers. Many of the Greek philosophers of that period were theologians because with the fall of Roman civilization, the church became the center for education. But the works of the medieval thinkers became central to the development of philosophy in the ages to come. The two major events of the medieval period were the fall of the Roman Empire around the 4th century and the spread of Christianity. Both these events had great impact on medieval philosophy and shaped its course. Although we talk about medieval philosophy as a single tradition, it comprises of four different intellectual traditions, the Arab, the Jewish, the Latin West and the Byzantine. The transition from classical to medieval philosophy is not a smooth one and was filled with tensions arising out of the incompatibility between the Greek and Christian thoughts. Here are a few questions for you, hope that you will try to answer them. Why do modern philosophers and historians consider medieval philosophy as an important episode in the history of western philosophy? What were ancient and Hellenistic philosophies? How did they influence medieval philosophy? How did the Roman Empire influence the development of medieval western philosophy? How did the church became the center of learning and intellectual activities in the Middle Ages? How did church influence the medieval philosophers and their ideas? How did pagan attacks on Christianity and Christian faith influence the development of Christian theology? What was the incompatibility between the Greek and Christian traditions of intellectual thought? Let me suggest a few books for your reference. The Rutledge History of Philosophy, Volume 3, The Middle Ages, edited by John Maranborn, Rutledge, London, in 1998. Medieval Philosophy and Classical Tradition in Islam, Judaism and Christianity, edited by John Inglis, Rutledge, London, New York, in 2002. Medieval Philosophy, the Oxford Illustrated History of Philosophy by Paul Vincent Spade, edited by Anthony Kenny, Oxford University Press, Oxford, in 1994. Medieval Philosophy, Rutledge Encyclopedia of Philosophy by Scott MacDonald and Norman Kritzman, edited by E. Craig, Rutledge, London, in 1998. Medieval Philosophy from 500 to 1500 CE edited by Brian Duignan, Britannica Educational Publishing, New York, in 2011. A Companion to Philosophy in the Middle Ages, edited by George J. E. Garcia and Timothy B. Noon, Blackwell Publishing, Berlin, in 2002. Thank you for watching this program. Hope that you have enjoyed the session. Have a nice day.